The Small Business Show, episode 137, for Wednesday, September 20th, 2017. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. That is some kick-ass intro music, by the way. I like that intro music. <laughs> so do yeah, I. Nice job yeah. finding that. That's good hey, stuff. You know, that's good. Yeah. yeah. It's always, you know, we're always trying to just, you know, take it up a notch. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. How's things out uh, your way there, sir? Uh, things are good. Yeah. Good. It's, uh, you know, it's fine. It's, it, we're in um, schedule readjustment period here, as I'm sure you are there. Uh, the kids are now back in school. And and they're now just starting to get like into a routine with, you know, the after school stuff and all those things sure. that don't quite kick in, you know, right when school starts. And, and of course, you know, one of my kids drives and one is about to have his license. So uh, so we don't really need to like worry about him, but we still do, you know, in terms of right. scheduling and drag them all over the place and all that stuff. So uh, so, yeah, it, but it's it's getting to the point now where. Uh, I, I can have more quality time at the office without nice. being distracted by, you know, things that might be happening with the family. Yeah. The summer is yeah. always weird. It, yeah. I, summers for me either are super productive or the like least productive time of the year. And it's really hard for me to predict which, which it's going to be. It just, it really depends sure. on the family schedule and all that stuff. So, sure. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It yeah. kind of does everything. The routine is important. You know? The routine. Yeah. yeah. It helps. Yeah. It just makes it, does it so. makes it easier is all it is. I mean, discipline yeah. can, can, you know, discipline can combat a bad routine, but uh, I don't know the routine, the routine, it's like a system, right? It's that Scott yeah. Adams thing where that's right. You have X amount of willpower to apply per day. And if you don't have to apply it to your schedule, then you have it for other things. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That's for sure. Right. Hey, um, yeah, that's right. You're right. And, uh, you know, you, you want to, I mean, I mean, I'm a fan of routine, but I also find I need to bust out of it uh, uh, often, uh, yes. you know, because I start to think like, huh, I, I don't ever want to feel like you get up and it's like, okay, here's step one. <laughs> here's right, step right, right. That's the whole reason we don't do that is so that yes. we don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I try so. to make sure I have at least one day a week. In fact, I plan it so that like and Wednesdays are generally that day, the day we record the show. This is really the only thing I had on my calendar today. That's cool. Uh, yeah. That's I mean, I, I've been busy all day. In fact, we were late starting the show because I was too busy. But um, you, but you that's sort of the thing is it's nice to have that that uh, I'll call it playtime. But, you know, just time where I can. <laughs> get a bunch of stuff done and not have to worry about, Oh, I got to stop for this meeting or I got to stop for that. Yeah. Whatever. It's flex time, flex you know? time. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Hey, uh, if you recall a few weeks ago, uh, well, actually almost a month ago now, um, on episode 133, we, we talked about naming your small business. And then we, we also, uh, took some listener questions and we spent some time on there and, and we had a comment, uh, pop up, uh, today on, in the Facebook support group, uh, it's businessshow.co slash Facebook. If you want to jump over there and, uh, Todd M uh, made a comment and he, and he asked about this and he didn't think we covered it. And he said, Hey, is it, is it still super important to get a dot com version of your company name? And, and I th it's a great question. I, I think we covered a little bit of that stuff around halfway through uh, about naming and SEO and, and stuff. Uh, but I thought we would discuss this for a couple of minutes and answer Todd's question. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I think it gets real important now because, you know, I mean, domain names are, can be very tough to get, uh, uh, you know, especially if you're, whatever your name is, if it's common or something. Um, so uh, my, my take on it, and, and I certainly, I want to hear your thoughts as well, since you're into this stuff. Uh, you know, I, I think it is, if you can get the .com, I think it's great, but you know, you're also talking to a couple guys that, you know, our, our website is businessshow.co. Yes, uh, right. and yeah. you know, I like the way that sounds, um, we couldn't get businessshow.com and, and I, we finally, I mean, I went around and around and around trying to, you know, get this going and you know, what we would do and naming and everything. And finally, I, I felt like the content was going to be the most important part. And plus we're going to be sharing across all these different social media platforms that perhaps are more important as well. Um, but we're a podcast, so it's a little bit different. All my other companies definitely have .com addresses. Yep. Uh, and uh, you know, I don't, I think 
you need to try to fit it in and come up with something, but there's some very creative ways to do it. And, you know, by adding, you know, uh, a prefix or a suffix, whether it's, you know, go or something online or, you know, that's the way I would do it. I, I wouldn't try to necessarily find the domain and then name your company. It, and I wouldn't butcher your name either, like taking out vowels and, you know, like Flickr or, you know, whatever. I, Hello, I just if you want Yahoo to buy your company, man, you know, Flickr, <laughs> you Tumblr, I, there's You're like, right. you know, that's, <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, that maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, I, I I think it is great. I think you should try to get it, but I think you got to you you need to get creative with uh, what words you may have to combine yeah. um, around your name. Yeah, what, what's your take on it? No, I I think I think having you need a web presence, right? Does it have to be dot com? I I think it like you said, it depends on the business. You know, for a tech oriented business. You can get away with a lot more. Like like you said, uh -huh. we have dot sure. co or dot io or, you know, any of these others where it just sort of works in the name of the thing. You can make it work. And people are used to that on the Internet. But but no, you know, brick and mortar, people still think dot com. So yeah. it, it yeah. depends on your business and where you're branding it. Right. If the only place you're branding it is online, then. Uh, you know, then you have a, a little more flexibility, yeah. but, yeah. but if you're branding it, you know, in person, uh, and I think Todd said his is, um, eBooks and a podcast. So I, I think you can get away with, with being flexible. You don't need the dot com, but I think you, I mean, I mean, you need something. So yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, and it, it's expanding out the more you see, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of, I don't know if they're considered top level domain, uh, you know, uh, now that with different, different, well, you know, dot co dot IO, like you say, so, sure. uh, yeah. maybe it becomes less and less and, um, depends how, like you say, it depends how they're going to find you, uh, and how, how you're going to promote it. But, uh, if you can do it, certainly, uh, I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Sure. Certainly can't hurt. Yeah. I, uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. So you you also, Dave, you you wanted to talk about, uh, you know, I, I just got back from this payment processing conference. So this yeah, is I want to pick your brain and, about and about yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's hear your story about your merchant uh, processor. Yeah. So we um, we we have two merchant accounts here that we use for two separate businesses. One is really just straight up. Uh, we we ding people's credit cards for. Uh, for their advertising. And we do that all in house and, and, uh, and we don't have like a, a, a an e-commerce store or anything for that. It's just all happening in house. It's almost like we're swiping their cards, but we're not. Okay. Uh, so that's one of them. And that's for backbeat media. And, uh, and then, and then the other is exactly the opposite. It is, we, we do none of the processing. It's all up to the customer to, to process themselves. And that's for our Mac geek gab premium uh, subscribers. People oh. that want to contribute to the show and they get some perks out of that and that sort of thing. Sure. It's all handled at recurring billing and all of that stuff. We never, you know, we just see, we see it after the fact, like once somebody has made a payment, we're like, oh, hey, cool. You know, um, and then we trigger the re renewals and all that. But it's all it, that all happens with a um, with a with a e-commerce engine that we use called okay. WooCommerce. It's baked into WordPress. It's great. Uh, of course. Of yep. course. Yep. Yeah, yep. it's great. Um, but. We have because we started doing this credit card thing so long ago, we went down the path of a having a traditional gateway provider and sure. merchant account. Authorized.net, something Author like that. Yeah, it's authorized.net <laughs> yeah, is yeah. is our our gateway. Yeah. And then our, yeah. our merchant is is with our with our bank. But we kept moving that around or whatever. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, and I started looking at the Mac Geek Up stuff, which is relatively low volume, right? You know, mm -hmm. and and we take that money, John and I take that money and and basically split it up every quarter. And okay. so every quarter, you know, and this started, we moved providers, I don't know, 18 months ago or something. And, you know, six, nine months ago, I look, I'm like, eh, like th the fees on this seem a little high. And it was all, oh, well, you know, and Lisa manages all that stuff here. And she said, well, it, I, I've checked, it's fine. Um, you know, we paid some fees because we had sign up fees with the new provider and this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Uh, but the, you know, the discount rate was, was, was good compared to what we had. We dropped like half a point or something. Sure. It was pretty good. Yeah. And then it was like, no, 
again, you know, this isn't good. Like what's going on here? And, and I, you know, I, I mean, Lisa's, first of all, she's my wife, but secondly, in in that role, she's my employee. So I try not to uh, go out of my way to imply that somebody's uh, not understanding something correctly. Right. Sure. It's like, this is your job. You figure it out. Right. And I don't want to micromanage, but uh, sometimes, you know, I have to. And so what's that? Yeah, you got to get involved. I got to get involved. Yeah. yeah. So I just kept looking at it. It was like I, every time I do the math, it would come up that we were paying like 15 percent was our effective. Like, that's what it was costing me. I'm like, wow. what the f- between like this, fees and yeah. this and that? Yeah. Well, that's it. It's like and I just kept asking where it like break this down for me, break this down for me, break this down for me. And, I, you know, I get these nebulous answers like, OK, you're not understanding the question that I need answered. Right. Which is fine. I mean, that's like, it happens all the time. Like, yeah, I I'm asking one thing you're hearing it one way. I'm trying to ask something else. Fine. So finally it was like, all right, we get to sit down and, and, you know, I printed the reports, which sometimes is the best way to look at numbers is, you know, looking ah. at them on a screen. I don't know. Sure. I Like you can get lost in stuff really easily. But printing them out and putting them on, you know, laying them out on a desk and having a pen where I can circle things and cross reference stuff made this really easy. So that in like five minutes, I figured out that, okay, well, they're charging us, you know, 30 bucks a month for this, no matter what. And then, you know, our we have there was some minimum charge on there, like every Uh, month we weren't hitting whatever the minimum. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, yeah. yeah, Okay. So fine. So here's this and here's that. And it did, it worked out that, you know, our gateway provider plus our merchant provider, which each of them wanted to charge me 30 bucks a month or something. Plus all these like minimum fees and other stuff. It was, it was up to 15, sometimes like 16% a month. And I'm like, okay, well this is going to end. Like there's just no way. And, and, uh, and, and I actually did the math for, for Backbeat too. And, and it, with Mac Observer, especially with Mac Geek it really pissed me off because this is like money that people are just essentially donating to us. We do, sure. we do give them yeah, some supporting stuff you guys, right. but they're supporting yeah. us. And I, I'm like, man, these freaking people are stealing this money that these people are trying to just <laughs> right. give to us. Like, this is yeah. not okay. You know, I, and I felt awful about it. And so, uh, so I said, well, let's let now while we're in it, let's, you know, now that you understand, go, go and do the same reports for Backbeat. And, and the Backbeat ones percentage wise wasn't as high, but we were still paying a lot of these fees. And that even came out to be like, it was, you know, tipping the scales of 4%. It's higher, yeah. much higher volume there, but still 4%. Sure. It's like, okay, wait a minute. This is stupid. Yeah. I don't right. care if they tell me I'm only paying 2.2%. I'm no, you're not. not. You're not. Right. No way. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's, that's such a scam. And, it, and it's a really old, yep. in my opinion, old school way of doing business that they tell you it's one thing, but it, you know, it's like, oh, the interest rate is this. And then, but the APR is this, you know, That's when you go to your bank or yeah. wherever, it's like, well, why even tell me that it's going to be, you know, 2% when in actuality, it's always going to be 3% you know, yes. or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah yep. it's, it's, so it's, I started it's, researching things and now for Backbeat, we're, we're ultimately flexible because we we're not tied into an e-commerce engine. We don't have recurring billing in that sense, or, you know, it's all just managed in the house. So I'm like, okay, well, that's easy. We can move to whatever we want. And but for Mac Observer, it's got a link with our shopping cart and I want to be able to do it. And I don't want to lose our subscribers. Sure. Right now. Yep. yep. You know, and this has been the reason that I haven't moved in the past because it's like, well, hey, you know, if somebody's on a plan where they're paying us, whatever, 10 bucks a month, yeah, or yeah, yeah. 50 bucks every six months or something like you know, I know that if I tell you, you have to, you know, tweak something with your, you're going to lose, you're going to lose a a significant amount. Yeah. But when you're paying 16% out of the gate, uh, (laughs) it gets easier to lose that. Right. That's true. Yeah. So we started looking and we narrowed down to, um, PayPal and the PayPal has a couple of options. And this is why I wanted to hear from you on this and, and Stripe. right? Right. Yep. Um, and so Stripe was the one that said, hey, we can migrate your authorized net data in. Nice. So, yeah. So I'm like, OK, great. And they both were I think they were both two point nine percent, which on paper is higher. But actually on real paper, it's not higher. It's way. Yeah, because you, 
Yeah, typically what they've taken the the stance is, look, you're going to pay one rate for everything mm-hmm. instead of we're, you're not going to pay extra when somebody has a mileage card Correct. or somebody does this or does, you know, Amex is a little different. Of course, you have a of separate course. agreement, most of those with Amex, but yep. um, it, it does make it easier to know up front what you're really going to be paying. Yeah, I don't care <laughs> when I know. I just want to like I want it to be yeah. predictable and I, I want it to be what I think it's going to be. That's really what what. <laughs> what I want, yeah. like yeah. I, you know, I'll make the decision. I'll, 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 I'll take responsibility for the decision. But I want to know what I'm deciding, not play like you said, play the shell game. Yep. And uh, so, and PayPal, I think was out of the gate, and I realized that you know we can probably negotiate with them, at, or maybe on their on their discount rate, but maybe not. Right. PayPal wanted thirty bucks a month. Stripe, yep. Stripe wanted nothing. And mm-hmm. it was the same discount rate after that. I think it was, I think PayPal maybe was 20 cents a transaction, whereas Stripe's 30 or something, but we don't okay. do enough transactions where that made a difference. So I was right. like, okay, let's try Stripe, especially because now I could do different. I don't, I don't use the same account, so I could use one for backbeat and one for Mac observer. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Sure. But I figured, well, we'll do Stripe. It doesn't cost us anything to get in the door there and we can see how it works. And so started heading down the path with Stripe. I asked the Stripe people, they, their support was great. It said, tell me what you need me to go get from Authorized Net and I'll get this. I'm sure they're going to want to encrypt this data because, you know, PCI compliance yeah. and all that. That's right. So I go to the Authorized Net people armed with knowing what I need, which is actually very, very simple. And they say, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep, we can. We understand the uh, the need for the, the the occasional need for a legal export. Right. And now they have a term that they're using capital letters on. And I'm like, oh, here we go. OK. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you have a term that you use capital letters on that isn't actually, a you know, a proper name. I know I'm about to get screwed. Yep. And and they're like, yes. Uh, so to do a legal export. The fee is two hundred fifty dollars per hour with a four hour minimum. Yeah, of course. It's a this roadblock. Is, this is thirty minutes max worth of time, yeah. and thirty minutes includes like going to get coffee and eating a sandwich. The, the, yeah, this is right. this is a somebody needs to press a button. Process. Yeah, yeah, somebody needs to just do the export. Right. That's it. Export, yeah. encrypt, send. Done. Done. Yeah. And uh, so you know, I've I've been I've got to run the numbers. I don't think it's worth my while. To pay them the thousand bucks, um, because yeah, it certainly I, depends on your on your volume, right? Well, it, it, yeah. No. How many people do I really think I'm going to lose uh, doing this? And yep. is it you know is it more than thirteen percent of them? Because if I'm going from sixteen percent down to three, like I can, I can have, I got some slush in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And and I think that you know that uh, the the way they handled it. That in itself is reason to change. Yeah, totally. Oh, I because, that's correct. Yes. Yeah, because well, my, my comment, uh, you know, if we were talking about, hey, should I go with Stripe or should I do PayPal or whatever? But to me, it always comes down to the people that you get to work with. And yes. if, if you make a good connection and things are smooth and you've got people on your side that are going to be advocates for you within, yep. you know, your merchant processor, within the organization, right? that's huge. That that's extremely valuable. And that's something you're not going to get from an old school merchant provider that wants to mail you a letter when there's a problem with a charge. Yes. Right. Yes. And, oh and, gosh. Don't and then you get this letter, yeah. you know, a week later and you're like, I was, what? going on why is this out of my account and they don't they don't know who you are um you know no one from uh first data or whoever your bank uses or this or that authorized.net is gonna say hey come and we're gonna have a conference come and we'll take you to dinner and let's meet and we'll talk about how we can grow your business yeah no one is going to do that but somebody will do that no doubt from stripe not only bit stripe but you know certainly on the paypal side yeah. they do it all the time and i'm sure that you know stripe has that kind of outreach program and advocate program that that help would help you out yeah. and i think that when you, when you're really coming down you know if if it was uh, if stripe didn't have a way to you know import that data that that's a big bonus but of course you got to pay now a thousand bucks because authorized.net is effectively holding you hostage they're, oh they're totally holding my my data hostage you got it that's, that's right, right. Yep. and they're doing this because they're holding on to an old school business model and they want to stop people from leaving and you you just don't need that gateway anymore no you, you just no don't. i don't i don't nope. need it 
It's it's right. totally right. Yeah. yeah. So so now, assuming that I I stick with my decision to not do the export and roll those dice, and and you know, I mean, it's I'm not doing this blindly. We've already been talking with our audience at Mac Geek Cab about this, starting that conversation. Like you know, there's there's ways of doing. It. I mean, these are our these are our listeners, these are our customers, and and yes. you know, so we've started that. We'll we, and when we do it, we'll send emails out instructing people how to do it and thanking them and all, you know all. Of, and I, I mean, I I'm talking about it sort of you know uh, blandly here, but like those thanks will be sincere. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, they of are. Course they are. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, assuming we we don't uh, we don't decide to do the import, that then frees us up to go with, say, PayPal Pro or or yeah. or, or the new uh, what who they just acquired. Um, not just, but well, yeah. a few years ago they acquired Braintree. Yeah, I, I would Braintree, suggest yeah. you you know use a Braintree solution against a PayPal company because it gives you really ultimate flexibility. You may not need that now, yeah. but going forward, if you know, Oh, we want to accept Apple pay or we want to use Android pay or we yeah. want to use whatever. And, and that their solution that they're coming after companies just like this authorized.net and these, okay. you know, kind of stodgy things because their solution is ultimately portable it is, you know, they're not the, the one of the things that's that the, the thing. And that's what Stripe has, yeah. by the way, because I, yeah. I already have yeah. Apple Pay and Android Pay now awesome. and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. It's, it's got to be so, portable. And that was one of my yeah. things. I did not want. Uh, now, obviously, Stripe is going to hold on to the token that uh, just like AuthorizeNet is now. Sure. You know, um, and, and I, I have not gotten an answer from Stripe about. What happens when I want to export from them in three years? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. a good question. Yeah, yep. Um, yep. but you know they're going to hold on to the token. But I didn't want something where they manage the timing of the subscription renewal. I want to do. I can do that. Like our engine will do that. I want to be able to control that because we're doing it with PayPal now. We we take. We've always taken PayPal, just straight PayPal, not not sure. credit cards with PayPal. Although we could. Um, right, right. Yeah. But PayPal standard, we were doing it with and they control the frequency of the subscription, but they're weird about it. It doesn't happen when you think it's going to happen. And oh, so, yeah, it, it's it's I, I mean, it's but, not the end of the world, but it, it's again, you know, I like predictability. And if I know that someone is due to to renew on September 20th. I don't want that coming in on September 22nd and PayPal yeah. saying, oh, yeah, they're on time. It's fine. It's like, mm, uh, yeah, that, that's kinda, weird. Yeah. 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 It is kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. And and so, you know, uh, the, the thing that I think you, you need to whatever uh, solution you go with is, you know, it, it's got to be kind of future proof. And I think the, all this uh, the due diligence that you're doing is will. Uh, you know, hopefully allow you to, to be somewhat like that. You know, the, the COO of PayPal that, that I listened to last week, um, one of the comments that I really thought was great that he said was like, you know, talking about payments just for the sake, uh, sake of payments is, is kind of boring. He's like, it really, sh it really should be easy uh, and, and in the background and, you know, we, we shouldn't have to worry about it. So and not even think about it. Yeah, well, it, 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 it that's how it always used to be. And the problem with what's happened with authorized, because my my numbers with authorized net used to be like three and a half percent or less every month because I, I was obsessive about it when we first signed up with them. And then you get used to it and it does become this boring thing that you just sort of roll with. And then, and you got to spot check this stuff every now and then because I agree. it, you know, it can get way out of control. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, the, it is crazy. Their price should be going down, not up. <laughs> well, you know, you, they're holding on to probably fewer and fewer customers, right? Uh, very traditional, maybe yeah. businesses that are not paying it, you know, attention, well, very margin. Attention. Yeah. Yeah. Margin heavy, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, industries that, just don't even see it. You know, yeah. nobody's looking at it. So that's great. Well, I wish you well. Tell us, uh, you know, come back and tell us how things yeah. work. Yeah, what I'll you decide you, to do. Tell and, you what uh, happened. And I'll, and I'll tell you the attrition percentage too. Once, yeah, once, that's, once that's we know that answer. Yeah. I mean, I know awesome. it's going to be greater than zero, right? Yes. I mean, that's just a reality. That's but right. I think it'll be less than 10%. Just given this particular base of customers, right? I, I, I think 
they will because they the only reason they're sending this money in is is because they want to support us. So I think that will continue. Sure. Um, but we're going to lose somebody. I know that, you know. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. Makes yeah, sense. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's good. What's well, good to catch up. Uh, hopefully we answered Todd's question. And uh, next week we're going to jump in and talk about some uh, financial uh, statement information and how to best interpret all, all that data and why you need you're looking at it, maybe looking at it a little differently than you have been in the past. There you go. And you'll, you'll have an Ethernet cable next week. So all this Skype <laughs> you know, stuff it, will go away. It just started raining and my, my temporary hero is outside. So we'll oh, jump out. And that's up, bad. And we'll talk <laughs> to you next week, folks. All right, folks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Keep living the charmed life and don't let your hero get electrocuted. <laughs> that's right. <laughs>